I'm Greg Uland, Marketing Director at Reynolds & Reynolds, and this is Connected, the podcast with best practices and ideas to help navigate what is going on in the automotive retail industry in the world today. As the COVID-19 virus continues to change our world and how we live and work daily, this podcast discusses ways to continue operating in this unprecedented social environment. On today's episode, we have with us Jeff Reisner, CEO at the Appraisal Lane. Jeff, thanks for joining. Greg, thanks for having me. Of course, of course, glad you could make some time. Um, Jeff, you and I have talked a lot in the past, but for the audience, could you give a little background on yourself and then uh, also what the appraisal lane does? Yeah, so um, I've been in the car business for approaching 40 years, which just basically means I'm old, um, and um, started out in the wholesale space, family-owned auctions, was fortunate enough to be uh, recruited by Circuit City and was a founding associate at CarMax back in 1993, and that really kind of charted my course. Um, I love structure, I love process, and I love making data-driven decisions, and that's kind of affected my career moves going forward. Um, spent some time at Lithia Motors as vice president of new and used vehicles. Um, at the time, we had 112 rooftops across 15 states, so I got a taste for scale and scope and working across markets. Um, also had a, a, a stint where I was um, a co-owner of an independent auction in Georgia for about 15 years, and more recently, a co-founder and CEO of the Appraisal Lane. Uh, the appraisal lane is a uh, kind of mobile-based community, um, kind of like a live trade desk where it's connecting consumers with dealers and dealers and consumers with a live marketplace. And dealers can use it to either value trades prior to trading, liquidate um, inventory that's in stock, or source inventory from other dealers or consumers um, in that space. Good, good. All right, thank you. Um, so with that, with that background, uh, obviously I want to talk with you about the appraisal process today. Um, you know, and, and with, with the world that we live in, clearly, you know, the appraisal is still a huge part of every retail deal, um, but it's really difficult to manage a process in today's world that's, that's safe and that keeps both employees and customers comfortable. Um, so what are you seeing changing in the appraisal process right now? You know, I think as an industry, our biggest challenge around trades is how can you migrate best practices and what you've executed for the, for, for the previous few decades and going through physically at the brick and mortar locations, how can you migrate that up, upstream? How can you do that remotely and still have an engaged, connected process that helps educate the consumer, um, not only on the number, but how you got to the number and make them feel comfortable with it and allow them to move forward um, with you towards a transaction. So social distancing has made that um, more important than ever. Um, there is no other way to interact with them right now except remotely. And, you know, that's our, our message is consistent. We've been touching consumers for almost a year and it's just more relevant now. So we're, we're, we're getting a lot of traction in that space and a lot of experience. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so with Jeff, I'm curious too, because, you know, being in the space that, that you're in specifically, it's, it's interesting. So with the future so uncertain, um, you know, we don't know how long this is going to last or, or what it's going to look like on the other side when we come out of it. Um, how are you at the appraisal lane, uh, treating valuations and, and I guess secondarily how, or maybe primarily, um, how much risk can dealers take right now when they're, when they're taking in a car into inventory? You know, what I would say is there's, there's, there's several baseline metrics that most institutions or large sellers use to, um, as a, as a, as a retention baseline in the marketplace. And, you know, they're, they're based on algorithms and they're based on transactions. So when you see a massive reduction in transactions and a backlog of inventory standing, um, it makes the numbers, I won't say less relevant, but less current. Um, because you're looking at, I'm retaining 91.5% of X, whether it's MMR or Black Book or KB, whatever the number is that you're using. Um, that's not a static number and you can't say that our market's plateaued or leveled off. Um, you have to look at the trend line. So it's not just that one data point, it's the data point from the three previous periods and what's the trajectory. And you have to get ahead of it because when you're connecting with somebody remotely, you don't know if you're gonna transact today or next week. And in the volatile market that we're in right now, that could be meaningful. Next week could really hurt if you're betting in today's dollars. So I would just caution dealers to make, um, it's hard to say make data-driven decisions because right now um, having real people and having those insights that come from your, that's all you do every day, uh, it, it couldn't be any more meaningful now than, than it ever has been. So at the appraisal lane in particular, we're baselining and adjusting our valuation methodology twice a day. 
So we look at the previous day's activity, not only in our space and the interactions and feedback that we're getting from dealers, but we're touching base with most of the major data providers. And we're also monitoring any online static postcard sales. We're monitoring about seven or eight a day in different regions across different sets of transactions. And we're not just looking at the transactions, we're looking what was offered, what the bidding pressure or lack thereof was, and we're kind of using those those observations to create insights and infer and adjust our methodology here again twice a day because it's changing that fast. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and thinking about it, um, you know, and doing it twice a day and doing it really, really frequently, you almost you almost have to, and, and dealers really do too, right? Because the situation um, four hours ago, even to your point, isn't the same as what it is probably right now. Yeah, when you, when you get up at eight o'clock in the morning and you're thinking about what a car was worth when you were working a customer at five o'clock yesterday, and at 11 o'clock, five sales have gone off, um, you have a different perspective and, and you need to adjust accordingly. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Um, well, Jeff, definitely appreciate you taking a couple minutes out of your day to, to chat before we hop off and while we have the audience here. Um, anything else that, uh, that you want to touch on or anything you want to say? Yeah, I mean, like uh, in the opening, I talked about we're a community-based, you know, um, product or, or we're a community, I guess is probably the best way to put it. And so we spend a lot of time connecting with all the members in our community, both buyers and sellers, talking about best practices. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of dealers leverage our, our consumer connectivity to set up and schedule one-on-one -on -one deliveries and, and pickups um, to transact with customers. And then they're following you know, simple procedures like wiping down the steering wheel, wiping down the, 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 the handles on the car. Um, you know, we're not in the medical profession, we're in the automotive profession, but we're trying to do the best we can with kind of the new criteria and the new normal that we're, we're operating in. Yeah, good, thank you for sharing that. Um, again, Jeff, definitely do appreciate you taking a few minutes. Uh, I know you're, uh, know you're busy, so, so thank you. No, thank you, Greg. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. This has been Connected. Stay safe, and we'll see you on the next episode.